Well that's basically the scene here on Gallywood Common this afternoon. Sun began to go down. This lovely um, late winter, well it's early spring really, uh, day. So that's the composition. I'm going to try and treat it basically fairly simple. Uh, so we're going to lay uh, a pencil drawing onto the watercolour paper, keep it very very simple. Then we're going to lay on basic washers, medium tones and then put in the dark tones. And all being well, we'll have a lovely little subject on our watercolour paper. Now I'll just pan down just to show you my setup. Here I am on the edge of the little pond and that is my drawing uh, paper uh, and painting paper. So let's get cracking. So the first thing I really need is an overall wash of colour onto the sky and the basic uh, land and possibly across the water as well. So here we go. I'm going to use a mop brush that points extremely well. Thoroughly wet that brush and I'm going to wet the paper. Now although these silver birch are um, white but of course they're in shadow so they will have tone on them. So that's an always, imp always an important um, thing to remember. Right, first thing I'm going to do is to add a little bit of lemon yellow, cadmium lemon possibly, not a bad idea, to this top right hand corner purely because that's where the sun is. And I'm adding a bit of red to that and all, cadmium red, to try and get that real warmth that you can see, top right hand corner. Let's really go in with some splashes of that yellow. Let's get that really strong. Always vital that we get that strong. Then we go with splashes of red. Seen me do this before probably on varying videos that I've done. Um, but it's pretty, pretty basic stuff really. Now we can go over to the blue. I'm going to, um, unusual for me, but I'm going to at least use three blues I think. Start off with cobalt, not too dark, and allow that to blend in its own way. Don't get too complicated with mixing on the paper. Then I'm going to use ultramarine. Ooh, that's a splash of ultramarine. There you go, look at that. Isn't that lovely? And then finally, bottom right hand corner. I'm going to use Windsor Blue or Prussian Blue and that's quite powerful too which will gradually blend down into that bottom right hand corner and then through that I'm going to put some pink and that will be alizarin crimson alizarin crimson along that bottom particularly the bottom area of that around there just to give added depth and that basically is all you really need to do for the sky yep I think that works quite well well while that is drying I'm going to look at more or less the undergrowth and an area anywhere in the far distance area and I could see lots of reds there and so I'm going to use a bit of olizarin with ultramarine to get a nice pinky sort of purpley mm, that'd be the answer I suppose into just to give a feel of depth in the trees there see how that pinkiness gives that depth that um, you so often see really in these subjects a bit more blue in the real depth of that uh, maybe up a bit there like that that's good 
and still got a little bit of autumn sunshine so I'm putting a bit of light red in to the subject well it's not autumn but uh, still got some of those lovely what you class what I'd class as autumn colors um, which isn't really autumn I suppose yet I mean it's well it's spring really so not really autumn but there you go uh, you say some funny things when you're um, painting now I'm putting that with ultramarine and a bit of crimson because I want to pick up these distant trees is it it's a big distant tree there I want to try and get the feeling of that the softness in the distance see that the way it's it's been put in with the point of the brush it's quite a tall tree that and uh, it's a lovely fern of light coming through that um, which um, it's always a nice thing to try and pick up and a duck has just decided to dive for some plankton or something on the on the bed of the pond which is always a lovely thing to see yet again there he goes I think you can probably hear him then of course in front of that we have a little bit more sort of colour more greenery so I'm adding yellow to that mix ultramarine so it's ultramarine cadmium yellow with a bit of olivine crimson in there but we won't get a brilliant yellow with that or brilliant green but nor do we need in this instance because we need to show a little bit of depth to this woodland area like that a little bit of depth there um, oh now we need some strong green I'm going to use the Windsor blue or Prussian blue here with the yellow that will really bring the green out and that is for an area that stands there see how pretty much green that is he's having a real bit of fun in that water which is lovely to see now just to freshen that up I'm going straight in with the yellow and just picking up some left hand sections left hand sides try and get the feel of light that's coming from those trees like that that's good as we come down lovely jubbly right still working my way on to this this is um, quite a fast process um, to try and get uh, this all sorted in time light red again just there as the sun is catching some areas of undergrowth late winter early spring sort of undergrowth like that good now we're looking at where the sun is catching this bank and I can see some lovely yellows so I'm going to use the cadmium yellow for this with cadmium yellow with a touch of Windsor blue and that hopefully will be able to pick up the feel of light onto parts of this the bank of this pond Look at that and really light there and I'm just spreading and what I'm going to do I'm going to incorporate the use of see well I've got that lovely fern of light catching the tops of those fern of, of undergrowth there and that's what I'm going to use as pretty much my focal point really 
because that will shine up in the sunlight that's coming through so we can incorporate that in due course and we do have some light red again in places along this area here which is all important if we're going to try and pick up the fern of this warmth undergrowth a little bit more light red this side there and the bank nice to catch it while it's still damp because that way you get a lovely feeling of um, of the bank notice how I'm sloping it down so it's coming down into the water's edge now to the light red I'm adding Windsor Blue and this is going to give me quite a dull sort of brown really that starts off the feeling of the bank against the water's edge like that there we are one or two of them bits will come up the bank a touch two little touches there play with the textures that you see there too it's a little bit of texture see where that point of the brush produces texture with that darker color on the left hand side mainly sorry on the right hand side because the lights coming from the left and then finally to finish that land before we look at fine details we're going to use burnt umber with ultramarine and a nice bit of burnt umber with ultramarine and I'm going to put some crimson some red in there as well a bit of cadmium red as well and this then will undoubtedly produce the dark tone that we need along the, the edge of the water which is always something that is needed and also because we've got the sun coming from the left where these trees sit onto the bank they will have shadow so that will sweep across so I'm already thinking about the shadow from those trees another shadow there and then we start coming down to the water's edge and this is where we sweep across at a bit more faster speed like that it's an impression it's the thing you've got to remember it's an impression not a um, not a photograph it's a pure impression and what I'm going to do now just before it dries use a flat for this purely because I've just got a flat there we'll draw some of that color up so them trees sit in see the way those trees sit into the edge of the bank there it just brings them into the edge of that bank there we are good we can work on that that's not a problem okay now the rest of the water well it's quite green really so I'm going to use Windsor Blue with cadmium yellow with a bit of red in there because it's got to be a greeny so like a greeny greeny brown watery color which is a funny thing to um, to achieve really but you need a bit of red to give you those that particular type of tone and 
to start with I'm going to use clean water just to draw a softness across this where that bank comes into the water that's it then I'm going to put in a little bit of yellow this side greeny yellow there that indicates the sunlight on that part of the water clean the brush then I'm going to use cobalt blue just sweeping across that water and the ducks have disturb the surface of the water that really makes this extremely interesting normally use Windsor blue for this final blue touch this side that really gives a lovely watery effect nice that the ducks have disturbed the water because that gives me the opportunity to give it have an excuse for rippling there we go look at that Excellent stuff. Now I'm going to use this dark colour to pick up the reflection of the silver birch. There's one there, and because it's slightly damp, and I'm jiggling and jaggling with the with the brush, gives a nice feeling of a reflection, a nice soft edge reflection. And there's another one there. Make them too wide. Like that, and there will be another one there, which goes down like that. Comes across that sort of angle. Plenty of movement to them. Then, of course, we can string off some impressions and that's all we can do is one or two impressions with the point of the brush to pull off the feeling of branches. And that is very impressionist. Very impressionist. Because it's the way it... Uh, I see it really. There we are. Look at the way that you've got that feeling of life in the water. And that's what we're looking for. A bit more yellow going into that mix now to complete the water's edge. The bank there, clean edge on top of the bank. like that show a bit of undergrowth coming up from the bank because there is there's plenty of undergrowth coming up there which we will see look at that justifies all the what's going on in the the background really like that uh, are we going to have anything here? Very little, I think, but maybe some little touches like that. Oh, that's nice. Now I'm going to dry that brush, or semi dry it, put a bit more yellow to the tip. I'm now going to show an impression of some. grasses and things going on in the bank because if you remember we did have there is a lot if you, I'll show you the the scene again shortly there is a lot of undergrowth there so I'll put on the lights as I explained earlier now I'm going in with the medium and darker tones that will eventually suggest light to the complete subject and we'll just stand up there a little bit a bit of standing up of color there not going to get 
too complicated with this. There is quite a large shrub affair there, so it's nice to show that. And there is a bit going out of picture. A little bit just coming in there, just to hold in that right hand side. And there will be some here as well, around this sort of area. Let's get rid of that bit of light there. See it? Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Superb. Just before we sort of take stock of what we've got, let's just add a little bit of colour to this lighter stuff there. There we go. Just to give a bit of light. See where that's that's really as balanced. You know, we've got a lovely balance there. Good. Let's call that a day uh, for now. I've been painting around 40 minutes, as you can see, uh, or if you, as you've seen, it was done in real time. And that is a sketch now that I can take home and work on in the studio. So that's precisely what I should be doing. And I can show you then the final outcome that I work up in the studio. Well, there you have it. It just shows you what you can work up in a matter of a few minutes, a subject that is quite acceptable to take home uh, and work uh, in your studio. So it's a lovely scene, it's a lovely view, lovely afternoon. So I'll see you back at my studio. Well, here I am back at the studio, um, arrived back from uh, my lovely little um, saute up on Gallywood Common. It's, um, it, it was a lovely day, uh, as you could see, and I've come back armed with this uh, sketch, which I'm going to finish, really, and I'm going to lead you through the basic principles of how to uh, finish a, a scene back at uh, the studio. But in the meantime, just going to have a quick coffee and uh, we'll bash on. Well, here's my setup this morning. I have brushes, um, paints, palette already, water jar, obviously, and the painting so far on the board. Also, didn't do a pencil sketch because I started the scene on site, but I did take a photograph, so I've got that to work to. So, um, yeah, all look, looking uh, pretty set fair for the next stage of the painting process. Right, now the first thing I will be doing is to thoroughly damp a number well, it's a more or less a half inch flat really because what I intend to do is to lift away the areas of trunks for the silver birch so the first thing you do you get a very damp brush then you get tissue and just take a little bit of moisture away so the brush wants to lift off colour rather than apply colour. So we're starting with this left hand one here. And I'm lift that it's it's damping the paper, but it's also lifting off colour. Then you clean the brush again, take off more water, and away you go again. And you can make the the tree as wide or as narrow and the shape you require really and make this quite quite wide so that's the process um make that quite wide because this has got to be probably the larger of all of them if your brush is too loaded you get too much water on the paper so you just need to be aware of that these, this 
these will be in shadow but consequently um, being silver birch we want to show the lighter trunks areas the small branches quite often considerably um, darker okay well I'm going to busy myself lifting off in that way all of the uh, trunks the main trunks have been lifted away um, so now we set about um, putting those lovely little dark sort of patches that you get onto um, silver birch maybe where the little branches have just pulled away and then perhaps have not developed or whatever um, but um, so let's do that and then of course the main dark what will be darker branches but let's just mix a nice little mix of ultramarine blue and Indian red let's have a little bit of Indian red not use that just try that and see what we get we don't want it really black we want a warm sort of dark color um, and then what I'm going to do I'm going to put that um, where the trunk is nearer to the ground quite often it's quite quite dark area like that that'll need softening and then we have these lovely little dark patches Sometimes that, that dark goes up there like that. Here we are. I'm just going to use this lightly damped flat brush just to blend that in in the lower area, which is the normal thing that I do with these lovely silver birch. Yeah. That's that. Just going to hone in a little closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, little touch there. This is all going to be shadowed off. There is a branch coming from that one, so we may as well put that in like that. We are just the start of that branch. And then these little nodules, whatever they are, just go up like that. There we are. One or two little touches. And the process is very similar with the rest of the. Just getting the sense of feeling we'll do the the smaller branches later once we've done that there we are and there again softening again with a damp use the flat you could use any any damp brush would do that nice and soft gives a lovely introduction to the lower trunk area and you continue like that throughout the um the conifer work the um silver birch work well i've moved in just that little bit closer now so you can completely see um the process i'm going to put in some branch work and i'm sticking with those same two colors ultramarine blue and indian red purely because it loves, gives a lovely warm dark color rather than go and burnt umber I quite often go burnt umber but um, on a day like today I think that's uh, it seemed that sort of um, sort of day really and I'm using the point of the brush I think you can probably see that the way I'm pulling off the branches um, I am aware of the trees themselves 
So consequently, I'm looking at the, the tree itself that I'm painting. Just making certain that I'm getting the right sort of shapes and forms. There we go, look at that. And then of course off of those, there is another one there coming off of that little nodule. Then of course off of those you get the smaller twiggy branches and they just get swept away. Um, where does this one go? Oh, that goes mainly up, which is unusual. But then I'm going to pull that one down. Uh, there is just one that lays down there like that sometimes interesting to have a one that actually pulls away in the away from the trunk it looks as if they're coming towards you really which is what we're looking for you don't want all the branches to be look looking as if they've come out either side of the tree always nice to have them um, and we continue that process throughout all of the trees and very little in that one lower down but so maybe because of the light source um, could be that there's another branch that heads up there and don't draw them in too you know drag the brush across the paper and try and get them broken that's it and then they tend just to lay out like that. Another one lays out like that. Notice I'm not being too specific with these. You know, it's it's a lovely process actually if you can just get the brush loaded correctly. And then as as the brush loads, you you, you drag across the paper and it breaks open the edge of the um, of the brush, and you get more of a of a broken feel which is ideal for silver birch now this one there again very little branches very few branches in the lower part that could go over that one so we'll have that passing that one and a larger branch there and then this one goes up like that and it has another little branch coming away something a little different you know try and vary um as you would see in in the scene itself look there's one just lays down like that i did notice smaller one above larger one there don't put them all in you know far too complicated to put them all in they do go quite well out to the outer edges and I'll continue doing that with the rest of the trees. Right, I've produced a mix of ultramarine and Indian red yet again. Fairly blue, but enough red in there, I think, without laying it on, I can't quite tell you. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to paint in the darker shadow side, a little bit strong. So that's the shadow side of the trunk. Paint that in like that. And then I'm going to use a small brush, just lightly damped. And I'm just going to soften that so as we still get a rounded shape. And there we are. Let's try and improve on that, shall we? I'm going to soften the left-hand side first. Probably what I should have done in the first place. But there you are, you live and learn as you paint. Done it before in that way. There we go. And now I'm painting up the right-hand side to produce the darker side. And if you run over onto the dry area, the paint stays. And you just continue with that process, really. Damp down the left-hand side. 
Light the eye up and you put in the shadow colour down the right hand side and it should blend with that and gently feed around doesn't matter if it's hard, hard etched in places not too concerned about that damp again down the left hand side and then down the right hand side you go in with the colour try and get a bleed around to give you that rounded shape and that is the way you paint silver birch with sunlight coming from the left hand side well that's the way I paint them every artist has their own version and um, it really is um, a personal thing when you come to paint you know some artists would possibly do it a different way round which um, I can fully understand it's quite often uh, nice to experiment with different uh, different ways of painting these lovely old trees love silver birch particularly with a side light it's nice if they if we've got a, a light you know some form of light coming from the side it's always the the ideal well for me anyway good 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 now finally just before we finish i want to give an impression of the very small twig shapes on the outside edge and what I'm going to do I'm going to take my flat again and for this I'm going to go in to the dark sort of shadow color and make certain that the brush is not too loaded so it's only got a and can you see the way the hairs have opened up when I've tapped it in the paint so you, you, you just dot it in the paint like that. You don't um, put um, too much on there. You can try it on a piece of uh, paper somewhere. But I'm going to go in and just hope it's not too loaded with paint. And what I'm looking for is, just took a little bit off, there we are, is the feeling of these overhanging sort of, twiggy shapes that you'll gradually see will give that lovely form now we can they typically hang on the outside edge of these silver birch Let's pick up a little bit more color just be careful when you go to these real extremes because if you pick up too much color you get a blob of color and that's um not what we're really looking for and it just gives the, to me it gives a hint of density to these trees which is there but you've got to be very very careful not too much in the glary part of the sky Let's take a bit more paint and just be very careful there we go look at that and that to me does just finish these trees off particularly well in my opinion but obviously some artists would leave just the tweaks you know they wouldn't uh, I think it enhances the light too in that top right ha left hand corner you know to have a feeling of branches in a sort of silhouette manner good well that is pretty much there I think what I'm going to do is to take the surround away and uh, reveal the painting with a white surround
Well, there you have the completed painting um, with the surround, uh, you know, the, the tape taken away. Just really needs a signature, as one should do. And I'm going to sign in this bottom left hand corner my normal signature. It's important that you keep signatures similar sort of style. Good. Well, there you have it. It's Silver Birch on the edge of the pond in Gallywood on the Common. I hope you've enjoyed that video. Please um, stay tuned to my YouTube channel. Click the link in the bottom right hand corner if you've not already subscribed. Check out my website colinsteedart.com Dot com where you'll see all of my latest paintings and uh, please visit my YouTube channel very very soon thank you all very much for watching